Good evening, IWV. This is Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Claire Ann Herbert, and tonight our guest is Candy Coffee, who is the horse project leader of the 4-H program, the Ridge Runners. Correct. Right? Okay. Yes. So, um, like I, what we were talking about before, I just want to make sure that we get this out there, that the Ridge Runners is a group that is affiliated with the 4-H program, correct? That's correct. It's the local chapter, the local club here in Ridgecrest. Okay. Yes. And um, how long would you say that this, this club has been together? Uh, well, the Rekindled Club has been together for about five years now. But um, the club actually was developed back in, I'm going to date myself, when my kids were in 4-H. My um, youngest son is now 31, and so that was probably back in 19, the 1990s is when we started it, early 1990s. Okay, and you said um, that this is basically reborn what, in the last five years. What was, right. the, what was the break in between that? Well, um, I moved away, and um, we did have some kids that stayed in the program and some parents, and then interest just kind of waned, and there was nobody to really kind of carry the torch anymore. So um, it, it just kind of went defunct for a while, and when I moved back, I was traveling on the um, racing circuit. I raced horses for a living. I was a jockey, and then I was a trainer. And then I decided yeah, you to retire. take some time to do what you like to do too. Right? Yeah, get exactly. It, get into those things. Yeah. Right. And then I decided to retire and move back to Ridgecrest. And when I did, I was here for a little while. And I have a granddaughter. She's seven now. But when we started the program, she wasn't old enough. But I knew she would become old enough. And she was animal crazy. And she's horse crazy. So I decided that it was time to rekindle the program. And my girlfriend, Tammy Heiss, and I got together. And we redid all the paperwork that needed to be done, which was no easy feat. Right. <laughs> and, um, and Ridge Runners was reborn. Awesome. Well, great. So um, would you say, I know we had talked about this, and you said that this is um, kind of a family affair, something that has been going on for generations. Right. So OK, well. Um, how or what was I say? How long would you say? When did you start doing it? Oh, when did I start doing 4-H? Yes, because oh. you said that you you were in it yes. before, right? Uh, here and then you got in your Ridgecrest, yes, I was in High Desert 4-H, and um, I was actually a Kern County All Star, uh, which is you know you have to go for interviews and everything else. They grade your book and they have to go for interviews and then you um, host functions over on the county level over in Bakersfield. So you're so, great for leading this. That's yeah. awesome. So you've got um, a lot of experience. <laughs> yes, I do. I was um, I was probably 10 when I first joined, <clears throat> and then um, I aged out. Um, and then when I had kids, and both my boys were in 4-H, so and now my granddaughter's in 4-H. All right. So. so when you say aging out, what can you explain that? Who yeah, uh, you that? you can start 4-H when you're five. From five to eight, you're considered a clover bud. So you're not really a full-fledged member because you can't do any of the large animal projects, but you can do small animal projects and all the um, arts and crafts and that kind of fun stuff. You can't do archery either or shooting sports. So um, then when you're nine, you become a regular member. And from nine to 19, um, you're eligible to do all the, pro all the projects. So, but then once you turn 20, you do what we call age out. You're no longer eligible, but you can become a leader. Yeah, I was point. just going to say, yeah. what, what would be the next step if right. you yes. still want to be a part of it? Right, exactly. You step right into the leader position, and then you start mentoring, you know, the youngsters. And a lot of them you've known because, you know, you were in 4-H with them, but you can, you know, continue the torch, continue right. carrying things on. So. Okay. So for anybody that might not be familiar, what could you give us um, an idea or tell us what the 4-H is actually, what, what that's all about? Okay. Well, it's an agriculturally based program. It's um, through uh, the UC Davis. So um, it is a program that teaches responsibility, um, respect, um, community service, um, you know, teaching yourself self-worth. Um, uh, it is uh, a program that is um, a little unlike Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts because 
Right, we were talking about right. You right. can um, you you earn badges and that, and it's a great program. But you usually go do one little thing and you fulfill the requirements, and then you get a badge. Whereas with 4-H, you are going to do a project, and that project continues through the entire year. So you generally have at least one project meeting a month for whichever project you're in, and um, a lot of them culminate uh, to at the fair. So okay. where you have um, your large animals, and then you know you bring your things to show at the fair. So and then once the, that year is over, then you rejoin and you can continue that project. So you take whatever you had learned the year before, and then you just start back up where you were and you go from there. Okay. So it's, it's an ongoing type of a thing. Right, so yeah. you're taking one skill instead of just getting a little idea, you're right. building. Really honing the skill, yeah. Right. You know, building upon you know, each level and going a little farther. Okay, and so, so with the animals, um, I know that the animals are a part of it, and this is farming and stuff. So what, um, what else is in, involved in it as far as the farming? Is there um, farm, like um, food, learning how to Oh, yeah, food do safety. We do canning and preserving. We have a cooking project, um, sewing. We've had a sewing project. We don't have one right now. We're looking for a leader. So. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we have archery. Um, we have, we're trying to get a robotics program started. Um, uh, we have, let's see, what else do we have? I'm trying to think. That's, oh, we have a tractor project. Oh. That's really cool. Yeah. And what, what is that? So learning what, how to use tractors? Well, actually, the gentleman who's helping us has let them take apart tractors that he has, and then they... So this isn't just learning how to use it. You're learning how to keep it up. That's and right. Maintenance and everything. And then they put it all back together and then see if it starts, and then they, he did teach them how to drive it. So... Yeah, that was a really fun project. And so we'll now, do you have all, all the groups, uh, do you have separate days for age groups, or does everybody come together and learn some of these things? Yeah, well, we have, we, each project has a list of members, so you can, you know, join a project. So each project leader has a list of those members, and they set up the meetings. So it doesn't matter if you're, like, say you're in the dog project. It doesn't matter if you're you know, five years old or you're 19 years old, when they have a meeting, they're going to call you all together. And oftentimes what happens is you'll have the older members who are a little more um, advanced mentor the younger ones because they're in a little different, they're in the Pee Wee division or they're in the junior division. So you'll right. have those kids that... Um, well, you know, Candy, I don't mean to, I don't mean to cut you off. It's okay. We're, we're going to be right back. Yep. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll get back on that. Okay, so perfect. Thank yep. you so much. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Now I want to love somebody, love somebody like you. And I'm letting go. Welcome back. This is Rich Crest Talk. I'm Claren Herbert, and tonight we have Candy Coffee, who is the Horse Project leader of the Ridge Runners 4-H Club. And we were just wrapping up some of the stuff that um, we were talking about what the kids do, and um, we just started discussing the junior teen leaders. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So can you go in a little further with that? Yes. When when the, uh, the kids reach a certain age, they're eligible to become a junior teen leader, which means they actually are assisting the project leader in training the other members. So it's it's actually honing them to become the a leader right, yeah, later right. on. So and you know it's not just maybe being a 4-H leader, but being a leader in any area of your life. You know, right. it teaches you life skills to be able to deal Leadership with people. Leadership responsibilities Correct. and mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yes. So yeah, I guess that would be the the step after. So you've got the kind of the ladder that's going up and and um, what was that saying that you had said that the responsibility is um, to make the best better to make the best better yes. right all yeah. right well that that definitely <coughs> teaching them as well to help with the little ones that's right when they started exactly yep and um, also another quote that I had read on the website was um, learning by doing yes right so that's yes. kind of what the 4-H group is all about mm -hmm. and um, we had discussed all the different um, things that you guys are doing which is the the farming and teaching the kids skills of what, learning 
what kind of skills. <laughs> 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 I'm like, where is this leading? Yeah, where it? is this leading? <laughs> yeah, so um, what would you say, in, in a nutshell, kind of reiterate what we had discussed, and then we can go into events. Okay, so what is teaching them in the program? It's teaching them responsibility. It's teaching them leadership skills. Um, it's teaching them community service. Um, it's, oh, I mean, it just is a really great program to make a well-rounded individual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, being able to, you know, raise animals and know you, the responsibility of doing that's amazing. I mean, they rely on you, and then being able to take them to the fair and do things and um, public speaking. That's another thing that you know they have to do. So now, speaking of the fair, you guys were just a part of that. Right. You want to go into that? Oh boy, a big part of that. Some yeah. of these events and yes. what you did and the right. involvement. We um, we started Thursday with uh, the animal move in, um, and we uh, then we have a, a weigh in that night because all the animals have to be weighed. So you have to know they have to make a certain weight to be able to um, excuse me be shown in the auction. And then um, yeah, just just to show the <coughs> how healthy these animals are. Or what's what's the <coughs> yeah? In order to deal um, with the weight, me. I have a tickle in my throat. Oh, <coughs> you need some water. <coughs> <laughs> it is that time of the year. We've we've <coughs> actually had. <coughs> yep. Uh, can anybody bring some water? Possibly. <laughs> I don't know I'm if they sorry. can. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll live. Really, I just uh, apologizing for coughing so much. Um, anyway, we so then the, yes, the animals have to be weighed because. It tells if they have a finish to them, if they've been fed properly. So, and then they go to the auction. So we have to know how much they weigh because they get paid by the pound. Okay. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's it's dry. It's it's coming into winter. <laughs> I've been outside all day too and teaching lessons, so that's really hard on my throat. So, and now I'm talking even more. But I'm good at talking. So, <laughs> so anyway, then we started the show the next day on uh, Friday. And they started with um, rabbits and calvies, which calvies are guinea pigs. Um, and it was actually an ARBA sanctioned show. So Now, um, are these the younger kids that um, are? Everybody can show oh, them that. Okay. But the little guys are eligible to do that. The five to nine year olds can show the rabbits and the guinea pigs. So, but anybody, all the way up to 19 years old, and we did have. We did have some of them that did that. So then we um, had the dog show that evening as well. And here so, is Andrew. Oh, your Yay, to save you the so day. Much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Oh, much better. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, then we had the dog show that night, and it was actually pretty funny because somebody was leading a goat around and it got loose and it ran right through the dog show arena. So it was pretty oh, that's hilarious. Funny. So um, yeah, that could be a funniest home video. <laughs> it was a great one. I, I don't think anybody got it on video, but oh. I saw it. And I thought, oh, that, I've never seen anything somebody like had it. to have had their phone out. I mean, you well, always see people with their phone. Well, you would think because, and then the kids were showing. So anyway, he ran right through the middle of the arena. But um, and then on Saturday morning, we had the the 4-H horse show. So um, we had 12 participants in that, and then they had um, dairy goats, pygmy goats. Uh, we had the steer shown, and then that evening they showed the swine and the sheep. So it was a very busy day. All so, right. and then on Sunday morning we have what's called master showmanship. So, every child who placed first or second in their showmanship in whatever um, animal they showed was eligible to do this master showmanship, which means they have to show all the different animals, whether it's your kind of animal or you've ever shown it or not. You get a chance to show all these animals, and then they total the scores. And the person who has the highest score is the master showmanship. Oh, so, okay. So I whether go. so that's the the master showmanship is showing how on the spot they can be, right? Right. <laughs> on uh, yeah. Some of these things that they're not familiar with. Correct. Okay. Exactly. So we did we did have some review for some of the kids, like I, I helped the horse kids, uh, and well, Lauren Zizos and Hope Zizos helped the horse kids. Um, show the other horse kid or the other kids how to show the horses, and then they all kind of took turns showing each other whatever their animal was. They demonstrated and helped the kids that had never shown them before. So it was a camaraderie and teamwork that worked out. Which this is another thing that's good about 4-H because you learn to work together and right. help one another. So it was really a lot of fun. The kids had a great time. Okay. So how how many would you say are participating in this? Uh, well, we or have part of the 20 plus members here. And we're looking for new members. Anybody who would like to join, 
Um, Always, and you've got um, meetings, right? So you can yes, they are the first Thursday of every month at 6:30 at Desert Christian Center. Um, and sometimes we change the date if there's like a holiday or whatever, but it's generally that's what, when it's at. So, and if anybody's interested in joining, they can call me, um, and I can give my number 760-371-5817, um, or Erin Strand, and her number 760-793-1811. And we'd be happy to answer any questions or, you know, tell you, you go online to get the forms to register. And you do also have a website, right? Yeah, we have a website. Um, it's in conjunction with my website cnctrainingstables.com and there's a page there um, for that. Now the kids are also working on, this is another thing we're doing, they're working on developing a website. We have a gentleman who's going to help them do that and then uh, we have a blog. So they're also going to learn how to do that too? That's and right that, and the right. blog will be connected right to the website. So and that's that we just um, started. That's actually an ongoing right. thing that's going on right now. So. Okay, all right. Well, this is a good time to actually because we're going to commercial. So um, we'll be right back after this. Uh, we have one last little section here. We're going to talk about the okay. 4-H, and uh, we'll see you after this. A little break. Welcome back. This is Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Claire Ann Herbert, and tonight we're finishing up our talk uh, with Candy Coffee, who is the horse project leader of the 4-H program um, called the Ridge Runners. Correct. Ridge Runners. All yes. right. So, um, what I would like to discuss in this last part is definitely get in your your title. You are the horse project, project leader. leader. So, for Ridge what, Runners 4-H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, could you explain to us what what it is that you do? Okay, well, I run, um, I run all the project meetings for the horse project for Ridge Runners. Um, I coordinate the horse show for the fair. Um, we also have skills days where they have to take a written test and then they also have to do a riding test. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so they start at one level and they work their way up um, and they get a pin, they get medals for their hats for that. So is this something if they don't pass the first time, do they just go through the program again until they pass? Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good way to make sure that they are yeah, moving Yeah, on. Though, you know, they can't graduate up until they pass that level. Okay. So, yes, we, um, we, and you know, I don't think I've ever had anyone that hasn't passed because we're pretty thorough, you know. Right. We try to go over those things and have plenty of meetings where we get it covered. So, um, we also ride in the Christmas parade which is a lot of fun. And that's coming up here soon, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the second week in December, okay. second Saturday in December. Yeah, so we'll be doing that. Um, uh, I donate my time and I donate uh, horses for kids that don't have horses because I do have a lesson program, so I have horses that are suitable for that. So don't be discouraged if you don't have a horse. You can still come and do the horse project. So. Okay. That's basically so this what is, and in, in that's in conjunction with the the program itself. Do yes. they take lessons as well, being a part of the? Well, Ridge yeah. Runners? What I do is I do a project meeting. We'll do riding meetings. So we actually, um, you know, get on and we practice things like for our skills day tests or like for the fair that we just had. They had to learn a horsemanship pattern. They had to learn a trail pattern as well as being able to walk, trot, and lope their horse on the rail. And then we also did some on the ground stuff, so they had to show their horse in halter and showmanship, which is um, without the saddle, it's just with the halter on. And one class is judged on the horse's confirmation, and the other class, showmanship, is judged on how the member presents his animal to the judge. Mm -hmm. So we do, yeah, we, we ride and we do a lot of things. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, what um, now that we're at the very end? I want to make sure that we also get in the the event. You've got an event yes. coming up as well. This weekend coming up on base is the community day, and there'll be a lot of different clubs out there um, and organizations, and 4-H club will be one of them. Um, it is from 10 to 4, and I believe it's at the All Faith Chapel uh, on the grass area there. 
So we will have some members there taking rotational turns from two hour t um, time periods. And there will be some small animals there and there'll be some informational flyers. And so you'll be able to t chat with some of the kids that are in 4-H and also the parents who are the volunteers and leaders if you're interested. Okay, all right. So, so how do you keep it? How do you keep it going? Do you have um, fundraisers and things like that? How do you keep the yes. the 4-H program? We do. We um, we put, yeah. <laughs> it's expensive to keep it running. So I, I would I would imagine. I mean, you've got the animals. You've got to do all the yeah you know, the farming stuff. Every, yeah, everything and we try. You know, I mean, it, we, it, the object is not to discourage people if they don't have a lot of money to come into the program. So if we do these fundraisers, which we have done play days at my place, and we donate the proceeds to the kids, and we do a food booth so that at the, at the play days, so they get the money for that. And then we also, as parents and leaders, have formed a group called Friends of Bridge Runners 4-H, and we do some fundraising as well. Like at the fair, we had a raffle of different kinds of prizes, and then we also did a 50-50 drawing. So we made popular. about 400. <laughs> yeah, we made about 400 dollars for the kids doing that. But they're not able to do that because it's considered gambling in 4-H. Right, right. So, we did talk how. Right. <laughs> so we, as a as a how group, we is. can do that fundraising, and then we can donate the money to them. So um, we the play days have been the big fundraiser. Other than that. So, and we invite people to come out and watch. It's free to come watch. We usually have a great food booth so you can eat. <laughs> okay, and where is this at again? Usually at my place at CNC Training Stables on Gateway, 1527 South Gateway Boulevard. And we try to promote it in um, the swap sheet. Um, we'll for sure let you guys know now. Um, yes, the yeah, paper, Kate, yeah, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So we, the radio station, we go down there to um, 87.7 has let us kind of put some things on there. So we'll make sure everybody knows. And please do come out and you can um, meet the kids. And sometimes we have a little petting zoo because I have the goats at my place. We have a sheep, a bunch of goats, a pig, um, and we have dogs and chickens and rabbits. And so we do a little okay. petting zoo for your kids if, you know, they want to go in there and pet the animals. And they can watch the horses do their thing and have lunch and donate a little okay. money to the kids. So, so with the age groups, if you, uh, I understand that if, you, if they're starting at a young age and they, they work their way up, now what happens if, say, somebody 15 wants to start? Do they start at a bottom level or how do you incorporate the ages? Yes, they do. The ages? Yeah, because they, they don't know anything about, unless right, they right, come in and they know something, but even then they have to Would demonstrate. Would you still like test them out yes, or they make do. sure that That's they are correct. at a certain level? Before right, and they, there's certain right. things they have to do, like on your four, if you notice on 4-H hats, they have stars on their hats and then they have pins and they have year pins and then they have pins for the projects for accomplishments, you know, of, of completing the project for the year. So in order to get these stars and these medals, there are requirements that they have to fulfill before they can earn those things. So if you're 15 or you're 9, you still have to go do the same stuff. Yeah, you know, okay. So yeah, that makes sense. I was just right. curious yeah. how that worked. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so we're, we're coming near the end, and I wanted to make sure that you got the pledge in there. If you would be so kind. And I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. All right. That's a pretty cool pledge. <laughs> yes, yes, it is a very great pledge. And um, for anybody that's interested, um, definitely Google the 4-H, and um, there's a lot of information on there, yes. and the Ridge Runners are a part of that. And um, also your website again? I know you already have com, and there's a page that's dedicated to it. So it has, um, it needs to be updated a little bit here lately, but it does have uh, contact numbers if you're interested, and it does have some pictures of the kids doing things okay. um, at last year's fair. So now we have new pictures, we'll be updating that. And okay. Yes, well, yes. great. And come see us at the community day. Absolutely. Yeah, come yes. on out. And also, thank you. Candy for being here with us tonight. Thank you for and having me. And make sure that you tune in to your local station here at KZGN uh, Monday through Friday. We've got the local news from six to six. Yeah, no, five to five thirty to six. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>